Come on, camera, what are you doing? I bloody hate wasting time. But I'm also starting to realise that great meaning lurks in dead ends, misfires, bad shoots and crap scripts. Fogging up the lens, sorry. Projects I thought soaked up my most precious commodity might have great meaning after all. This film is about another batch of short stories that haven't made it on their own, and at first glance seem like a huge waste of time. But the great truth about work that doesn't make it is that it's just as important as the stuff that does. You need bad, not quite right, awkward, under-inspired or overly complicated to have good, inspired, sustainable or even brilliant. The beauty of mediocrity is that we need it. The first mediocre film is The Great Tree Hunt. It's a perfect example of how creatives follow through ideas, or not, based on what we think is our best use of time. I run past this tree a lot, and every time I pass it I think, you are bloody magnificent. Okay, I'm gonna watch the film. It was around here, it was probably about a year ago, running along this passage here, and I hear this almighty crack off to my left somewhere, and I feel it in the ground, and boom, down comes a tree. Had me thinking about that philosophical statement of, you know, a tree falling in the woods, and does it happen unless you experience it, or hear it, or see it? So I'd heard it, but I, didn't, I, could, I couldn't see it. I skirted right around, went to the other side of this ferny gully here and was really looking for this big monster tree down and I'm yet to see it, a year later. It had me thinking when I did it, I thought, I'd love to find out what the biggest tree is in this area, my home patch where I'm running five days a week. I'm gonna find out the biggest tree in this patch of bush. I run past this tree most runs and you know what it might just be the contender it might be it it might be the biggest tree in this bush yep there it is so over the course of a couple of months i'm just going to come out here with my camera i'm going to do a grid at a time off my little map or a creeklet at a time and look for the biggest tree. Might be this one, which will be a little bit disappointing, but it's all about the hunt, right? I won't lie, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't finish this film. That's a bloody nice little introduction there. I'm inspired by myself. More to the point, I'm inspired by these suckers. Beautiful big trees that have endured. You know, a seed is a metaphor for how we spend our time on earth, isn't it? We all have lots and lots of ideas. They're all seeds, every one of them. This film in particular, it, it's a good idea, but it's also a lot of work too. It's, a, it's an elongated filming process where I've got to get up in the morning and head out bush, bang around, bushwhack for a while, looking for trees. I couldn't think of anything better, to be honest, but it's a hard filmmaking process. So its only flaw is the storyteller himself being a bit of a lazy shit, not getting out there and filming this thing. I wasn't supposed to sit here in the middle of the road and, and, and create animosity towards myself, but that's what's happened. <laughs> Filmmaking, like any creative art, is a tricky game of commerce versus curiosity. Ideas need to have personal meaning, but they also need to be interesting to others. This might well be the defining characteristic of making money from art. Finding a form of expression that others like experiencing as much as you like making it. This next film is Beach versus Tip. 
I shot this while on holiday with the family. It's a complete little film and was supposed to be short and sweet, but it lacked a certain something. <laughs> the glory of recycling. Okay, shit. My shot's all stuffed up now. Okay, let's not beat around the bush. We're gonna have trucks coming and going. Let's do this. Wow, that's bright. Holy Jesus. Okay, I've got a problem. Uh, I'm staying at a friend's house uh, at the beach and uh, we put the recycling and the rubbish out to be collected by the truck and the truck didn't pick up the recycling or the rubbish. Picked up other people's rubbish and recycling, but it turns out my friend uh, doesn't get it picked up by the truck. They take it to the tip themselves. Good, good move. So it turns out the local tip's really close. It's only a kilometre up the road. I'm going to walk the rubbish and the recycling to the tip. And instead of taking my daughters to the beach this morning, I'm going to take them with me. In fact, the whole family's going to go. There's a lot of hassle in going to the beach. Think of all the stuff you take to the beach. You take the picnic, you take the beach towels, you take the backpack, you take the kite, you take the snorkel kit, you take a bucket, you take a first aid kit, you take a dunny roll, you take everything. It takes a half an hour just to pack for the beach and then half an hour to unpack and then the house is full of sand. Do you, do you, would you rather go to the tip or the beach? The tip. Yes, that's the answer I was after. Are you excited about our trip to the tip? Yeah. Good. I am. I think this is very novel. Oh, look at the technique Mama's doing. Whoa, one forward, one back. Do you have many people walk their pins up? No. Trendsetter. A trendsetter, yeah. there we go. Nice. Okay, rubbish bay one, recycling bay two. Yes. Today was 27 degrees. The UV was medium, the wind was light. It was a perfect day for a family trip to the tip. Well, that's a pleasant enough little film so it was undershot, undertold, under underthemed, not quite right. But you need to make those things to recognise it sometimes. And and here it is, you know, creating its own kind of thing by being not quite right. I just ate a fly. I was on that beach holiday to be a dad first, a writer second, a runner third, and a filmmaker fourth. So I was kind of a fourth tier filmmaker whilst making that little film. And it was purely based on being opportunistic. Like, and what I didn't do is I didn't lean more into the beach thing. I needed to shoot more at the beach. I needed to shoot us all going to the beach, which we did every day for a week, to, to give it that contrast. <laughs> that lady's wondering, what's that bloke doing talking to a camera at the front of the tip? Yeah, fair enough too, lady. Much like a musician or a band recording 30 songs to make up an album of eight tracks, we all need a B-side. Great works need mediocre works or they run the risk of never being created. The third mediocre film is called Circuit Breaker. This is the oldest of the films that have been dug out of a box of hard drives. It talks about a subject close to my heart. Lacing up and doing the simplest thing I know, running. This is a circuit breaker run. Everyone needs a circuit breaker run in their life. I get a kind of office bound after a few hours of editing. I reckon it's probably about 5K. I'm gonna write my time down and I'm gonna compare my times over time. Whoop, this way. Okay, this is the first ever time I'm running from Mitch's house from the editing suite.
Feeling good. Of course, it's only a short run. Approaching what I feel to be the halfway point. Back over the river and the grind up the hill now. Had a K. Here I am on the road I grew up on. The first road I ever ran. Here I'm about two thirds of the way. Uh, about 100 meters to go. Go back to editing now. Uh, I think I'm refreshed. 364,219 subscribers. There's as a, as a time code. Everyone should do this. When things get funky at work, tie your runners on, get the hell out of there. 2750. Man, I'm getting slow. Whew. I like that song. It's a great song. But it's a flawed film for two reasons. First and foremost is a circuit breaker run in the middle of my work day was supposed to get me away from work. And then I made it work, didn't I? By making a film out of it. Oh yes. And then we're editing. This is my great shots, Mitch. Looking at shot selection. This is my um, circuit breaker run. Let's make the very thing that shouldn't be work into work. Therefore defeating it being a circuit breaker, you big old dickhead. But the one thing it does emphasize is just how much we should listen to our freaking bodies. Trust your body. I don't get the frig out of an office chair or an office room or four walls or a car. I don't do it often enough and I do it a lot. Need to get out of there and use these things. Oh, that feels good actually after the run. Over the years, I've been a horrible filmmaker at times. But there comes a time when you wake up one day and without realising it, you slide on some shoes that are worn by the worst filmmaker you've ever met. This final film is my second date with a new friend. The working title is A Haircut with Hamish. For Hamish, he was the last person to touch this masterpiece. Do you want to, should we, should we cowboy coffee? I feel like we've yeah, got, yeah, we let's do let's this. coffee before we cut, right? Yeah, let's do this. All right, I took a guess on how much coffee, but I just erred on lots. So I'm here with Hamish, we're uh, at a it's a pretty shitty bit of real estate, to be honest, but it's, you know, well, beggars can't be choosers. We're going to have a cup of coffee, and then Hamish, he hasn't cut much hair before. Have you ever cut hair before? I actually asked ChatGPT, I said, hey, what are the 10 steps for a man's haircut? <laughs> and most of them were like, strike up a good rapport with your customer. Like, you know, talk to them about... <laughs> Talk to that. Keep communicating with your client throughout the haircut about what they want. So there'll be a lot of that to keep the chat up. That's fun. That sounds like, how do I be a good taxi driver? <laughs> Similar kind of set of rules. Mate. Guy. Hey, what's this thing out here, mate? So what it's Harbour Bridge. It? So that's one of the traditional ways we get from north to south. <laughs> but quite iconic. Now, because you've got to go do the kid run. So get, let's, let's get, get a haircut. Kids. Okay, can I first, first things first, um, again, can't thank you enough for coming to the clinic. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank might get you to, yeah, while we still have some dew on the ground, sir, can I just get you to just lightly rub your head? There's some good clover over there. Just lightly rub your head on the ground. <laughs> this is such a good time for the rangers to come by, Bo. <laughs> Man, I thought we were about to get busted for giving illegal haircuts for a second. What are you after, champ? Um, look, I tell you what, and I don't often say this, but you do whatever you like. <laughs> yeah, great. Just stoked. Well, I mean, I don't want to show off, but I've actually got two types of scissors. You're parting me in the middle. I don't know, mate. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Jeez, for do what you want. <laughs> hey, you're doing some good stuff back there, Hamish. It's decisive. Yeah, we've got a good rhythm on. Yep. 
if someone's judging you on the back of your head, well then they're you know not kind of your friends, are they? True. Or, or, or your really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much Zoe spends on her hair? Oh my Do, God, uh, mate. Talk about that? Oh yeah, it's ferocious. Well, if Zoe likes what she sees, uh, she'd let me take her appendix out before she <laughs> before she let me do her hair. Yeah, um, <laughs> mate. <laughs> oh, look at that angle. He's done all right, and he's what even got a part. I didn't even know I had a part. You got one now, champ. It's quite a pleasing little film, isn't it? That's making something out of nothing, I tell you, because. Did you see my film work there? You know, he's top talent. He's as well known in Australia as the Prime Minister. Shit, that's good. I feel like I'm <laughs> no, a rock I'm star. Doing stuff <laughs> yeah, like that's this. right. And I get down there and we're having a coffee, we're having a great time, having a haircut, and I balls it up with bad filmmaking. Oh, the sounds. Yep, yep. The insight there is to focus on one thing. And I was trying to focus on having a good conversation. And uh, whilst doing that, I was a very bad filmmaker. I didn't let Hamish touch my beard. So I thought I'm gonna do that now. And I'm gonna use the little, the little, I'm gonna use this here. Oh yeah, that's it, that's in fact. I'm gonna use this uh, as my, ah, as my mirror. Ooh. Now going back now. I'm gonna go for a run in about an hour's time and I'm gonna feel like I'm running like the, the bloody wind. Wow. I'm inspired by Hamish's haircut and to kind of, as a form of self-punishment, I'm just gonna do my own hair now. This is what hobby farmers do. Hobby farmers use their tiny little 40 horsepower tractor to do things that require more than 40 horsepowers. And I'm cutting my hair with a beard trimmer. I can't see, so I'm just gonna... For those of you who know about hair and hairdressing, that you must be just shocked at this process, and so, and so you should be. Okay, I need to say something to finish this film. There's beauty in mediocrity. You're looking at it right now. Look at this beard cut. Look at this haircut. I am as mediocre as they come. But you know what? Life's pretty good. I'm gonna go for a run right now. Christmas dinner in a couple of days time. I wanna enjoy that Christmas dinner. Everything's seven out of 10 and that's okay. There's beauty in mediocrity. There's the bloody hope so.